In this video, we are bringing to you the new IWC collection, including the halo piece, a watch that only needs to be adjusted every 45 million years. Don't go anywhere. Oh, Chris, another year, another world. Where is and this it's place? Not, it's not even watches and wonders. Like, how are you, man? Hey, how are you? Good to see you. You too. Yeah, we're in the industrial heartland of Zurich. <laughs> this used to be a gear factory back in the day, the Mark factory. And here we are Doesn't for like Portuguese a tribute to eternity. Indeed. Now look, Chris, two years ago, mm. we're talking about ceramic pilots. Indeed. Last year, we relaunched the Engineer. We did. And then this year, I actually think we're landing on something that is perhaps even more on brand for IWC than yeah. both of those things combined, which yeah. is functional complications, which yeah. is at the heart of the brand, but better than that, functional calendar complications. Yes. And I, I want to so. kick off, I love to surprise you. Chris is like, what is going on? This is where the heirlooms come out. <laughs> yes, good class <laughs> present. I, I, uh, <laughs> I can see the little laser from your sniper in the wings. <laughs> Not at all. I want <laughs> to show you a little video wow. to get us in the mood, because I feel that rather than talk about Kurt Klaus, we yes. should hear from him. Yeah. First time. A chronograph in combination with perpetual calendar in a wristwatch. Then it was the first one, first perpetual calendar, indicating the year in all four digits. And people was crazy. They were, oh yes, yeah, yeah. You see it here. This was the first we presented in Basel, 1985, and it was a full success. Yeah, lo love court. Big and come on, Kurt a energy. legend, an absolute legend. So I've always wanted to share this story, and yeah. I've wanted to land in on this part of IWC's mm. brand that I feel has so much uh, distance to go. Yeah. But I was thinking, how can IWC? re-enliven the story of calendar watches yeah and you've delivered me a great gift this year absolutely because that's yeah. what you've done that's what we've done and you know since 1985 you know there's been a couple of development steps in the perpetual calendar mainly the 2003 integration into portuguese that bigger gear train given that moon phase and added accuracy from 122 to 577 years big jump but of course we were never satisfied <laughs> with that and the result of all of that striving is here with us today. Come, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, Chris, let's go back to Kurt briefly. Yep. It's 1985. The perpetual calendar on a wristwatch already existed. Yeah. A couple of brands, Frank Muller, Patek Philippe were two of them. But on average, there were 200 plus components in those watches. Yep. They were considered a masterpiece level of a wristwatch. They were not shall we say, democratize, yeah. they, they weren't brought to the people. Mm. Kurt was charged with, Mr. Klaus, I should say. Yeah, was, Kurtis, absolutely <laughs> fine. We, we call him that on okay. a good day. <laughs> um, he was charged with, <clears throat> with bringing this watch to, to the wrist mm. for more people. Mm. And not only to bring it to the watch in terms of its, its uh, the number of complications and in terms of the industrialization yeah. of the process, but yeah. also in terms of an idiot like me, <laughs> Being able to understand yeah. how to set it, not needing a little push piece. Yeah. Uh, Program wheels rather than intricate gear trains with push adjusters. Exactly. Absolutely. With beautiful yeah. lever decoration. Make it ingenious, make it usable. That was always Kurt's mantra. And also later on, when you think about Gunther Blumlein's system engineering approach to IWC, saying, look, I'm a simple systems engineer. We make things that are ingenious, that are robust, and that are user friendly. And I think that yes. sums it up beautifully. So, Chris, how have we stayed true to that engineering DNA in this new model, the Eternal? Yeah, it's a great question. So this is an Eternal calendar, which basically takes both of the key functionalities of a perpetual calendar with moon phase to the absolute next level. So the original perpetual calendar in Kurt's execution basically followed what is known as the Julian calendar. Mm -hmm. It is a basic leap year adjusted calendar, which assumes that every four years there is a leap year. But of course, we are now on a Gregorian calendar, dating back to Pope Gregor back in the 1580s, which has some exceptions to compensate for the fact that the actual solar year is not exactly 365 days, but a little bit longer. So as Easter was moving further and further into the summer, the church got a little bit annoyed and said, we've got to do something <laughs> about this. So in comes the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar basically says that in a 400 year period, where there should be 100 leap years, we are skipping three of them 
and only putting in 97 leap years. Going forward, this happens exactly in the years 2100, 200 and 300 mm -hmm. before 2400 is a regular leap year again. And the way we've done it here is by simply having three complementary program wheels which sit on top of one another one being the classic four-year wheel rotating once every four years telling you normal year normal year normal year leap year the next one then is a Maltese transmission wheel which gears down the four-year wheel to a 400-year wheel completing one entire revolution in 400 years so this does less than one degrees per year and in our lifetimes this will rotate kind of a quarter of its way and this is an extreme gear reduction. And the overlay... If your head is hurting, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, we're only going to just get started. Do not seek medical here, supervision. <laughs> Mine is hurting, started. and I actually know this already. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, again. in the mechanism, you can imagine there is a lever that is touching the outside of these little gear wheels to feel whether it's a leap year or not a leap year, depending on the depth of the indentation in the gear. Now, by overlaying these free wheels, you are getting to a combined indentation, which gives you three exceptions then in the 400 yes. year process in 2100, 200, 300, where it will know to skip the leap year. So 138 <laughs> components, and I'm not done yet, okay? okay. <laughs> by the way, I want to point out one thing, 138, stay on that number. Yeah. 138 is 102 components less than the perpetual calendar yep. uh, from Patek Philippe in 1985. Thank you. So we've still got a few components to play with if yeah, you need them. Absolutely. Yep. So that is number one. So now you have a calendar which knows every day, month, year correctly all the way to the end of the calendar, mm -hmm. which is 3,999, after which we have no longer defined what happens in the year 4,000. Small administrative problem, but I often think you know, millennium bug. And I then, often think you know, you know what level. will that be resolved by the time you know, but by, by the, when we're in three thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, it I better really be. hope it's resolved. It better be, otherwise, you know, our mobile phones will go a little crazy in the year four thousand. Anyway, <laughs> moon phase. Chris, I'm going to pause you on moon phase. It's double moon TM trademark. Yeah. Now, this is a unique. IWC creation, the double yep. moon perpetual calendar, which depicts the moon in northern and southern hemisphere. Correct. Yeah. So let's bring the moon into the story because you kind of own the moon when it comes to perpetual calendars in a yep. way. We own, yeah, you've got two yeah, of them. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. Two moons, you've got a rotating disc on top, you've got two blanked out spots underneath, then you've got a here, a, a, um, a geocharged surface here, and by the overlap of the opening in the top disc and then the spots on the bottom disc, you actually get this appearance of a waning or waxing moon for the northern and southern hemisphere correctly. Now, again, the, the, the moon poses a problem because the lunar, lunar cycle is not 30 days. It is actually 29 days, 12 hours, 44 minutes and 2.88 seconds. And that again needs to be corrected. And whether your moon phase is correct or not solely depends on your mathematical ability to get a gearing which gets to as close to this rotation cycle as possible. Original moon phase, Kurt Klaus's perpetual calendars, had an accuracy of 122 years mm -hmm. before you had one day, 24 hours deviation versus the actual moon. Then we put that mechanism in 2003 into a Portuguese, a bigger diameter movement, more space for the gears, adding to 577 years accuracy before you have that one day deviation. In the eternal calendar, we tasked a supercomputer <laughs> to give us the best possible solution with three parameters. We said three maximum wheels, 100 teeth each, and then whatever the gearing ratio is for those. So the computer crunched 23 trillion possibilities and came back with a list of 100 sort of good recommendations. And then our technical director said, that one please. And what you have in the end is a micrometer precision gearing on three wheels that needs a photolithographic process to actually grow those wheels because you could never machine them from metal. So this right. is a phosphor, um, nickel phosphor wheels that are actually grown in that computer chip lithographic, uh, photolithographic mechanism. And in the end, that gives you the two micrometer precision that you need to get to that kind of gearing to then in the end, up our moon phase accuracy from 577 years to 45 million years. So if you're thinking, is the eternal a bit of a stretch? <clears throat> is this IWC perhaps conflating their, their well, uh, achievement here? I mean, 45 million years ago, what was happening on Earth? Was it was anything? Was Earth uh, even here? Late, late dinosaurs. So yes, there was a lot here. And when okay. you think about Earth, Earth has been around for 4.5 billion years. Life on Earth, probably 3.8 billion years, yep. right? But then 
we've only been wondering about stuff like that for about 5,000 years, which is Aristotle, <laughs> and really understanding time and space only since Einstein, 1904. So we're relatively new to that subject matter. So to apply for this watch, you need to do three courses. Uh, Chris yeah. will be personally marking your essays. So um, You need to be able to uh, totally anorak out with us here. Let's land this plane yeah. on a number. Yeah. What does it cost you to own that piece of eternity? So the retail price for this particular watch will be 150,000 Swiss francs in Switzerland. And so this is uh, a, for the beautiful platinum case, double box glass construction, beautiful glass dial. We haven't even spoken about the glass <laughs> dial yet. We <laughs> haven't <laughs> talked about this fact there's glass components yeah. in there too. Glass components, the yeah, there's barrel bridge cover and glass. And then we have a glass dial which frosted, back lacquered, multi-layered, again, given this a permanence of absolute corrosion resistant whiteness for all eternity. <laughs> and after that, of course, that beautiful sapphire, the uh, sapphire double box glass Can I help briefly? Because I'll, I'll, talk, yes, I'll talk to you about wearability, because I'm sure Do that what you're thinking Thinking about, it. I will not. <laughs> is is this forty three? Is it is it seventeen millimeters thick? You know that will determine this purchase. Yeah. This watch is forty four point four millimeters in diameter. It yeah. has this amazing domed rail around mm. the edge, which which gives you this double glass box effect. That is so cool. I haven't actually seen that mm. until I picked it up. Because the when you look at it front on, it, it's a bit of an illusion. You don't realize that it actually yeah. it's very three dimensional. Turns around. It's mm. fantastic, and it is fifteen millimeters thin, yeah. which I think is we can say that that's quite impressive considering what it houses. And the funny thing is, Chris, how many years would you have to stare at that aperture to see it do anything? <laughs> well, from the 400 year wheel, I mean, again, you know, one, less than one degree per year, you know, in a lifetime, you might see it moving marginally, marginally, marginally. So look, that is a very hot start for the Portuguese collection. Can we cool off now with some uh, absolutely with some refreshing the Portuguese colors collection with yeah. just some lovely colors, make it pretty colors. Let's Give do me it. something simple. There's a lot more to it than that. <laughs> So Chris, let's just jump straight into this. What's different about the Portuguese collection aside yeah. from this insane halo piece we've just discovered? Yeah, absolutely. So we really tried to re revamp the Portuguese collection in a sense in looking at every single detail and bringing back that instrument character of a modern timeless dress watch that is both has the clarity and the readability of an instrument, but is classically refined in every single element. So first of all, when you look at the automatic and the perpetual calendar, you see that the dial graphics have been really, really finely retuned. We've got that very, very crisp double moon indication on the perpetual calendar, fine print that follows the curved box glass there, and really a very nice classical balance in those dials. Mm -hmm. The dials themselves are a completely new process. So we've got 15 layers of clear lacquer on every single dial. You've got the PVD treatment for the soliage finishing that you can also see here as it is applied. 15 layers of clear lacquer, then all the three-dimensional applied indexes, giving that dial really a depth and a finish that we've never had like this in a Portuguese before. When you look at the actual case construction, we're using a double box glass construction. So there's curved sapphire, top and bottom, and actually a slimmer case ring, giving that 42 mm. millimeter automatic and that 44 millimeter I have millimeter to say, perpetual. it has a real optical effect, this, yeah. this slimmer case uh, shaping. Uh, it's, it, and effectively, it's an illusion, isn't it? Yes, it is an illusion, but mm. what it does, it, it gives you a visual lightness and it opens up the dial and mm -hmm. it also opens up the case back. So when you look at the, actually, especially in the, uh, in the automatic 42 and automatic 40, we now have a full case back opening that really yeah, shows off wide screen that TV the, back. <laughs> yeah, that the movement is and the rotor are actually the exact size of the case. You know, yeah. there's absolute zero margin between the flanks of the case and the actual movement. You see that peloton winding, Good you Lord. see the ceramic components, the that double barrel. This is the bridge. most open case back yes. I have ever so seen it's, in my life. Absolute full opening. Yeah. Uh, Widescreen TV is a good description. That's mm. what we're aiming for. And the same for the dial, you know, it just that construction just opens up that dial even more, you mm. know, on that forty two millimeter model. And lovely sympathetic uh, date wheel, I see. Absolutely, on both yeah. models. This has a slightly <laughs> more dun blue, and yeah. then in this we have uh, yeah, you have a the, slightly lighter champagne. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And exactly. what other colors do we have, Chris? So this is this is horizon blue. So we're I? roughly following the day. So this is Hollywood lighting, you know, sort of late <laughs> afternoon. But we're actually starting off with a silver golden hour. Yeah, golden hour, exactly yeah. that. Silver moon, and then it goes into obsidian, which is more nighttime, sensual, going out, hitting the city. <sighs> and then you've got horizon blue, which okay. is the height of day. This That's is all true. about the sun-soaked shores. 
So this one here is our Horizon Blue colorway. It's a really, really nice, subtle ice blue. And we combine that in white gold with these Santoni color gradient straps as you're wearing there as well. This one is the Portuguese Automatic 40 model in that same new construction. I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a preview there of what that looks like on the case back. Like we've actually in included all of the engraving underneath the glass. So you get that double box glass um, oh, execution. Yes. All of the engraving is actually behind the glass. There's no outer case wing left. And when you look at the side profile again, you get a beautiful slim finishing with that brushed on the, on the white gold. And then that crisp ice blue with a very strong sunray finish. And then again, that beautiful clear lacquer finish on top, 15 layers, just to finish that off and give that special depth. New waterproofing as well to five bar, and then those gradient um, calf leather straps that we put on that together with Santoni. Really fresh summary look, but still just that timeless daily watch. And just, just look, looking at that gradient on a, mm. on a strap, I haven't seen that before. Starts light and then gets darker towards the, uh, the tip and the tail. All right, Chris, black and gold never gets old, and I don't think I've seen black and gold look quite as dashing as this. I know, it's a, it's a very, very sensual combination. Again, Why? with that what deep black. What is different about this combo? Is it, is it yeah. the richness of the lacquer? It, it absolutely is, yeah. I think you're getting a depth from these dials and a, a pronunciation of these sub counters that just makes all the difference. And honestly, we looked at so many different prototypes of these dials. And when we had this finished, where that sunburst finish is still yeah, slightly you can see visible. the strobing of the sun ray, but it's there's still a there. depth to it. Yeah, but there's an, and it, honestly, it looks completely oh, different from goodness. any black and gold dial we've done before. It's like, you know, velvet, yeah. how velvet has a shine, yeah, exactly but a feel to exactly it. It's that. almost like you can yeah. feel this dial. And here we have a, a very interesting addition to this collection. This is actually our Portuguese tourbillon hand-wound day and night. Yeah. This is actually an idea <laughs> where- Shout out to the interns. <laughs> Because this is an intern's idea. Yes. So well, actually an apprentice's idea. So this was a, one of our youngest watchmakers actually came up with that idea of having a rotating ball that you can see from the front and the back in the movement, which basically by the gold side and the black side gives you the indication whether it's day or night. And it's just a beautiful addition to the dial, which gives, gives it depth, good technical complexity, but still doesn't interfere with that, that beautiful sleek finish. And when you think here, you have a hand round a, a model, 42 millimeters, you have a flying tourbillon at six o'clock with tourbillon oh stop, with diamond shell technology, where you can precisely set to the second. Any other facts like that about this collection? Because I want to stay here as long as possible. The Obsidian is absolutely my favorite for the reason that you've described. Uh, this combination itself is just so dashing. Yeah, what is interesting, of course, is that our 5N uh, armor gold is a mechanically treated 5N gold, which is actually much more scratch resistant than a standard 5N gold. So again, this is one of those innovations we trialed mm -hmm. a, a few years ago in a, in a big pilot and have now taken over into the full 5N gold in the Portuguesa. Makes it absolutely unique. So the typical light scratching you get on gold watches is much reduced in the 5N armor gold that we're using in the Portuguesas. Amazing. We have one display to see. Absolutely. I don't know what's there. Let's have a look. But here we really have the most classic versions of the Portuguese automatic and perpetual calendars. Here we've got a beautiful 5N armor gold with silver dial. We call it the silver moon. So this really takes our absolute DNA perpetual calendar into that era of the lighter dials and the double moon and the similar execution on the silver dial. Very, very classic gold appliques in the automatic 42. And then for the first time here displayed on a blue dial, we've now got the fully engineered, um, ready to integrate metal bracelet in stainless steel and an H-link bracelet on the Portuguese automatic with the release pushers and the five millimeter fine adjustment system on the pusher here, allowing you to adapt this to the size of your wrist. Similar design, but not the same. Not the same at all. So mm. this is a different profile H-link uh, bracelet with a higher middle link structure of polished More center bolus. links. Yeah. And then also to show the versatility of that, if you want another sporty rubber strap, that also exists now in a Portuguese automatic, making that more versatile in terms of you know, what it can be uh, as a daily watch uh, compared to just the alligator. Look, so the Portuguese, are, you know, by and large, will be available from April this year. So I'm really looking forward to what people are going to think of this reinterpretation, that evolution of our most on DNA classic wristwatch. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'm very excited. There's some great technical highlights and I can't wait to see what people think.
Awesome. Neither can I. And this is where the fun begins. Get down there and tell us about it. Chris, it's always such a dynamic and somewhat mind-bending joy to spend time with you. But that was by far um, University of Chris Granger Air. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this class. Uh, to apply to buy the watch, you must pass an IQ test. No, you mustn't because otherwise I wouldn't have even got to this point. Um, thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think of this new collection. And thank you again, sir. Thank you.